All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, again, the recording has started. So welcome to our kayaking championships uh, pre-competition webinar. Um, championships is this Saturday, the 14th. On the call tonight will be myself, uh, Zach Cintron, Mike Sarnowski, Steve Bennett, and then we do have Jack Brosius on for technical kayaking questions. Um, so we will roll through this tonight and we will take your questions either throughout using the chat function or you can raise your hand and we can open up your line. Um, we will do uh, a Q&A section at the end if you wanna hold your question or we can take it uh, potentially during the presentation. So um, to start off, we're gonna talk, talk about some COVID protocols while my cat runs across my screen here and throws down the slideshow. Um, we, will, we will try this again. Um, all right, no cats allowed this time. So uh, we will talk about some COVID protocol updates. We will talk about the scheduling for this weekend. Um, we'll cover some parking, facility layout, logistics, the usual stuff. Um, again, for the most part, you guys have done time trials already. Championships is relatively similar with a few minor tweaks. So we will talk about those this evening. Mike, do you wanna take over from here? Sure, so um, th th these next three slides, uh, but stay on this one. Uh, I'm not going to read through, but I did want to have them. These are the same slides you all saw. Uh, I think we have them for the preseason, but definitely later on in the season in terms of where we're at. Um, I'm pointing this out, particularly this one, because again, you can see we have the low risk category, uh, which we were in for Saturday, this past Saturday, that is, uh, with 10 or fewer um, cases per uh, 100,000 people. Or we have that option for the 80% or more of participants being fully vaccinated. Participants be, meaning everybody who's there, all the delegation members, all the staff and GMT and all the event volunteers. Um, and then uh, moderate risk is 11 to 15 cases and also not meeting that, uh, that 80% or uh, significant risk is 15, uh, more than 15 cases. So right now, uh, or today, we, we, we get the new number for Maryland every morning and it's for the previous day. Um, the, the number for yesterday is 11, uh, uh, yeah, is 11.8. Um, now uh, that increased again, uh, and it's continuing to increase. Uh, the increase from the day before to yesterday was somewhat smaller, so I don't know if that's a trend or not, but there is definitely the likelihood that we will be either in the yellow or the orange, and there are implications for that. Um, now, we are still trying to get that 80% or more people fully vaccinated. We can only count somebody as fully vaccinated if we have documentation from them, uh, their card and such, and thank you very much to the several areas um, who have gotten stuff into us and some others I know are working on it. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But Zach, if you want to just go to the next slide, I'm not going to read through this, um, but this just as a refresher, it's here because you're going to get the slide deck. This is just sort of the generic um, situation and then the next slide as well. Um, we'll have another version of this in a slide or so that is specific to the key things for this weekend. Okay, so Zach, if you want to go to the last one. So it's unclear which situation we're going to be in as of right now, which one's going to apply on Saturday. Um, so following what we captured on uh, uh, Saturday, in terms of the delegation percentage, uh, we were at 60.6. Uh, and then I sent the notices out um, overall. Uh, and again, some areas had or delegations had sent in for most folks. Uh, some had not sent in for hardly any. So we're looking to get some more in um, in the next uh, day or so. Uh, asking them, everyone to get those in by Wednesday night. You can have your coaches send them directly or your athletes send them directly to coaches at somd.org. It can be a photo uh, off their phone of the, um, of the form of the card. In fact, that's how many of them are. Um, and uh, Mr. Jank went so far as to have smiling faces holding their cards. <laughs> That's not necessary. Um, but yes, <laughs> uh, but um, the more that we can get in, um, the, the, the better that will be. Uh, and I mean, hopefully we, we may make it to 80% overall, 
but we'll see. So again, today, uh, the most recent number is 11.8, um, and then, but it's continuing upwards. So there are, we could be in any of the three scenarios, either in the green, low risk, um, the yellow, moderate risk, or the orange, significant risk. And we want to share this with you so that you're aware and can inform your folks. Um, so on the next slide, it kind of breaks down the, I mean, this isn't everything, but it's the key thing. So as far as masking goes, so if we're in green, if we're in low risk, um, and the, the really, realistically, the only way we're going to be in the low risk category is if we get all the vaccine, you know, a, a bunch of folks submitting the vaccine and we hit that 80%. It's highly unlikely that the trend is going to reverse and the numbers are actually going to go down. Our best hope is that the the count per 100,000 is going to continue to slow as it goes up. But if we are in the low risk, everything will be the same, essentially, with one exception. And that is we will have a separate viewing section for families and spectators. And the reason for that is we're not going to be able to keep track of those of the families and spectators and their vaccination status. And if we try to factor that in, it's definitely going to kick us out of that 80%. So, but other than that, everything is, is pretty much the same. If we do get to yellow, and my guess is the highest likelihood is that's where we're going to be, is the yellow, the moderate risk. So in that situation, everyone will need to be wearing a mask, except when they are doing what they're calling rigorous exercise. We're counting that as the athlete is competing or the partner is competing or uh, for the event volunteers and potentially some coaches when you're hauling boats. Hauling boats is a lot of exercise, so we're going to count that as that. Um, we do have distancing required, uh, we're, but we're not going to count that for any of the doubles teams. So don't worry about that being in the same boat and so on down the line. We will, in, if we're in yellow, we will be doing on-site screening for individual participants. That means each person will need to come by a desk we'll have set up uh, probably at the base of the stairs of, um, of the boathouse, just so people, athletes don't have to deal with the stairs. Um, and check in there. We're already getting lined up with several people to help with that, with that check in. Just the, each person will need to answer those four magic questions that you all are so familiar with. If we're in yellow, we don't have to do temperature checks. What that does mean though, is that we're to control that, we're not giving out credentials, we're not giving out name tags until someone checks in through that, uh, through that site. We will still have the coaches packet for you that'll have your bid numbers and all the other stuff that you need. Uh, we'll, we'll give that to the head coach, but we will need everybody in the delegation to come by for that. Um, in terms of the spectator space, we would still, of course, if we're in yellow, have the family members um, in that separate location. Zach, I think, is going to show you a slide with that to get, at least give you the rough idea. They'll be able to see um, the uh, um, the awards. They'll be able to see the course, uh, and also we will be we would relocate opening ceremony to the space where we do awards so that they can see that as well. Um, and then uh, lunch will be provided uh, for folks uh, for the delegation members and event volunteers. Um, uh, Jack, if you can hold that, let me go through the orange and then I'll come back for the questions. If we get into the orange uh, category, and that would be with more than 15 per 100,000, it is certainly possible. I'm optimistic maybe that things are slowing a little bit, but I was optimistic last week and I was wrong. So, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. So um, masking is the same as the moderate risk. Distancing is the same as with the moderate risk. For the on-site screening, we will be doing temperature checks. Where that's important is that slows it down just a little bit. So um, just be prepared for that. Luckily, we're not talking about for delegations, huge numbers of people. Uh, it's with athletes and, and all combined, Zach, I think it's what, about a hundred, something like that. Maybe not even that many. Um, there is, if we are in orange, however, it explicitly says you, we're not going to flip back to it, but you can see it there that we, we aren't allowed to have spectators. We're going to interpret that. And that includes family members. We're going to interpret that if we have them stay over in Wilmer park, 
that is sufficiently removed from everything that's going on, that that's not counting them at our venue, and that'll be okay. We know that if we do not allow families or any, any of them to come, that's going to cut your numbers in terms of athletes who are going to be in attendance to almost nothing. And so um, we think that that's a good compromise. My understanding um, is you can actually, you can definitely see the starts from Wilmer Park, particularly if you go out sort of on the, um, it's not a cape, but sort of on the cape, if you will, the point. Uh, you can see most of the race courses so they can do that. The other thing that uh, is in there is if we are in orange, we cannot provide meals. Um, so even the bag lunches and such. So if we are in orange, everyone would need to bring their own food. Um, that includes volunteers, that includes everybody across the board. Um, so I'm optimistic we're gonna be in yellow. I would love to be in green, but I, as much as, as everyone is doing with this, and it's still valuable to get those, um, the vaccination cards in, don't, don't hold it up, still get them in. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, I just need to be realistic with this. And once you get them in for any other sport that the athletes are doing, if they're doing any of the fall sports, it'll still be, it'll be in already for that. So Jack, you had a question before we go to the next slide? And you're on mute, sir. You should be able to unmute. I muted you because we were getting a little background noise. You should be able to unmute. There okay. we go. Um, Washington College has imposed mask requirement for all people inside the boathouse or any other facilities. Uh, that's just their requirement right now. They just brought that in. So okay. uh, people have to be prepared that if they go inside the boathouse, for any reason, they have to wear a mask. Uh, Jack, that's thank you. That's extremely important because staging for um, awards is going to be done inside the boathouse. Uh, one of the things that we will do, uh, and Zach, if we didn't already pack these, we can dig them up, um, is uh, what we did at Summer Games. If anybody was at the track, we had two huge boxes of Ziploc bags um, in the sandwich size Ziploc bags that we'll have, uh, if we have to get another batch of them, we can uh, get them quick. But uh, you coaches can come and grab them uh, and your athletes can use those to put their, their masks in and then they can take them back out and, and that way they're keeping the mask sanitary and, and so on down the line. Uh, but yeah, they're definitely gonna be inside. Those of us doing some of the computer work will be inside also. Okay, the other thing is the college is holding retreats right now. They held, held a faculty uh, retreat today and they're holding a staff retreat tomorrow. And what they're doing is they're holding the retreats in the breezeway. Mm. Okay, they held the retreat there. And they had about probably today, they had about 50 or 60 people there. And they, they didn't have to wear a mask because they were in that breezeway. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, so that might be something, Zach, to, to take a look at. But the, the thing is, um, if we're in yellow, we're going to have to have their masks on during that portion, too. Okay. So, uh, okay, Zach, you want to go to the next slide? Because um, that kind of, I think, summarizes it. So, again, we're asking everybody to get, again, your vaccination cards, have your folks send them in. Uh, we'll get them. Uh, everything that I got on Saturday is in GMS already. Um, and that's how we're doing the, the calculations. The other thing is if you know of any scratches from the roster that I sent on Monday, I sent each of you, uh, the head coach, as well as right. the um, area director, uh, a roster of, and, and indicated whether we had their vaccina a vaccination card for them or not. Um, if there's anybody on there who wasn't already marked as scratched, who you know is not gonna attend, let us know that by Wednesday as well. That can affect the percentage as well. Um, and, and again, when we're saying this, uh, also recognizing for privacy reasons and for other reasons, some folks may not have been vaccinated and that's okay. And some folks may not be comfortable providing the information and that's okay. Um, we don't wanna be um, you know, uh, looking askance or, or sideways, if you will, at, um, uh, at anybody who's not providing it. 
Just if we can get it in, it can help us. So, but we need that by Wednesday night because on Thursday morning, we're gonna take a look at the number on Thursday and we're gonna, uh, both in terms of the percentage of vaccination cards we have and also the, um, uh, the that rolling average of whatever per 100,000. And we're gonna make a decision that will be short of some col you know, calamitous change between then and Saturday. We're gonna make a decision on Thursday morning what protocol we're gonna be operating under and let you and your area directors know by noon so that you can advise your folks to be, and they can be prepared. Again, I am optimistic, but it is not a decision yet. I'm optimistic that we'll be at least in the yellow, um, but we'll have to see. Uh, I mean, and certainly if we are above 15, it's, it's sort of a no brainer. We don't, uh, if we don't have the, the, it's not like some big scientific thing. <laughs> if, you know, if we're at that point, um, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, we wanna give you at least a couple days to advise folks. Um, uh, particularly if it's a situation where um, uh, you have to, some people need to bring their lunches or whatever. So um, uh, that's where we're at. Uh, and then I'd say any other questions on this and then Zach and all can go into it, Al, and then to Jack. One question I have on the, uh, on the case rates. So when they do their numbers crunching on the case rates per 100,000, is it always a whole number or, you know, and I'm thinking, so what if it's at like 10.1, that's above 10, would that put us in the moderate? So, no, so um, there is a typo or an error, or maybe it was by design that you're right. Green went up to 10 and then yellow starts at 11. So there is that sort of no man's land in there. Well, and, and not these numbers the are... between, it's not the case between yellow and orange. Yellow and orange, uh, yellow is up to 15, orange is more than 15. So um, yeah, uh, and, you, that you're you very observant, my friend, um, but uh, it's, uh, unless we're, it starts to drop, which, I wish that was the case. I right. don't see the numbers going down. That right. that the case per hundred thousand. I just don't see it. Okay, then I won't ask my next question. We'll just leave no, it. To no, 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 <laughs> no. But you, you are you are right on. And maybe when a recording is not underway, we can have a little chat. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. All right. Thanks. Sure. Uh, Zach or oh, Jack, rather. You had a, uh -oh. you had your hand up. The uh, Kent County right now is around 78% vaccinated. And so they are running a lower restrictive atmosphere. And there's gonna, as I mentioned to you earlier in an email, there's gonna be two big, two or three big events around here besides ours. Um, so you want me to have the Kent County Health Department contact you on Thursday to give you an update of where they stand? Now, um, we're, we've made um, the, the we're, we're, all of our decisions are being based on a statewide level for an event like this, because, uh, I mean, one, we've already made that call, but also we're pulling people in from across the state. Mm -hmm. um, and so I appreciate the offer. I don't know that that would, that that would really help. I, I, but I do appreciate the thought and the offer with that. Okay. Any other questions specifically on this? Again, we will be getting by noon on Thursday, maybe even earlier, because some of us will be here very early to meet the athletes who are going to the Ravens camp. They're all meeting here at 6.30 in the morning on Thursday. So, um, but by noon, no later, we'll let you know what the situation is. And we, of course, will include the, um, the, the, clear, like the chart that has this. So this is what it means that we're in yellow. Uh, or we're in orange or whatever it happens to be. So, okay. So, uh, Al's got a, a question again? Yeah, getting back to that idea about going inside a building uh, would require wearing a mask. And you had said something, there was some activity that was gonna be taking place in the building staging for- So award staging. If okay. you remember the last time we had it, uh, there's that big, that nice big room. Yeah. Uh, and, but I mean, Jack's idea of the breezeway 
uh, Zach, when you guys are there on Friday, you can take a look and see if that would help. The thing is, we would still have to wear masks if we're in yellow. So, um, okay. But, uh, but if we luck out and are in green or in the low risk, then that might be a great way to, to do it and avoid um, the, uh, the college um, uh, requirement um, uh, of masks indoors. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, why don't we hold any more questions on this? I'm sure stuff is going to pop into your head as we go forward. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to turn my camera off, but I'll be here through to the end. So if any come up as we're going through, uh, after Zach finishes uh, reviewing stuff, we can certainly have some more um, conversation on it. Okay. Thanks much. And Zach, back to you. All right, folks, uh, we're going to do the fun kayaking stuff now. Uh, now that we got the protocol stuff out of the way, definitely important. Um, but we want to get to the, the stuff that we're excited about this coming weekend. Um, kayak drop off schedule. Um, I think the only person Al, did, did you take your boats back or you left them there? Yeah, you left them there. So I, I'm right that Hartford's the only one that really needs to drop off morning of um, St. Mary's and Frederick, I believe will be rolling in the night prior again. Um, please just give me a, a text when you guys roll in like you did last time. Um, we will help you guys get your boats situated and we will uh, make sure that, you know, you guys are taken care of on Friday and then we'll be there to receive Harford as well. Um, for anybody that has their boats on site um, already, but still need to come back and unload them. If you could make sure that you come back and unload them prior to eight o'clock, that would be fantastic. So if you can get there a little bit earlier, uh, you can get them unloaded and we can get you taken care of. Um, but we definitely wanna get all the boats uh, off and taken care of prior to 8, 8.15 at the latest. Zach, I'm gonna interrupt. And yeah. this, I asked Jim to join us for a moment, not yeah. <laughs> whatever, but uh, he was still here. So I uh, thought it'd be good to yeah, awesome. say hi. Uh, hi. Uh, but most importantly, thank you uh, to all of you for everything you've done. Uh, Jack, it's great to see you, man. I was thinking about you watching the Olympic Games and the kayaking from Tokyo. Um, and uh, I know about your experience. So uh, thanks for everything you continue to do. And, and Al and Pam, you guys are awesome. So I look forward to seeing you uh, and everybody else that's on there that I can't actually see on this call. Uh, I'm looking at the screen. I'm not sure if I've got everybody up there, but Bob's here Bob Singer, and Austin. Austin, thank I'm you guys. Not sure who the numbers and are. The, so, at any rate, everybody who's on this call, who's made this kayaking season a reality, uh, I love this sport. I love watching our athletes glide through the water, and particularly athletes who have done it for the first time when they get out there, and just to see the success. But the opportunity that you've given them in terms of getting back on the water. And as we emerge from COVID is exceptional. Um, and so I just want to thank you. I look forward to seeing you all on Saturday. And the only thing that stands between you and the end of this meeting is me shutting up. So I'm going to stop talking so you guys can go on with your agenda. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Now that we can go back to our scheduled programming here after an appearance by Jim. Uh, so, again, you guys can see the schedule. Uh, no, just kidding. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. No, no more, no more gym interruptions, folks. We're, we're rolling on through this. Um, so you can see we've altered the championship schedule a little bit from the original schedule on the fact sheet. We've slid things a little bit earlier, just in case we have to do those individual screenings and check-ins to buy us some time. Um, the good news is this is no earlier than time trials was last week. So whatever you experienced and felt last week at time trials, that's what we're going for this week. Um, so realistically, we shifted everything up by 15 minutes to a half an hour. So nothing too catastrophic to the schedule. Um, again, just like last time, the, one of the big things is that all the boats have to be off the water for the course preview by 8.15. Um, I know some folks decided to go check that out kind of last minute at time trial. So if you could plan that a little bit earlier for this Saturday, um, because we want everybody to be around to experience the opening ceremony, that would be fantastic. Um, we will do our coaches meeting, same place, you know, 9, 10, 9, 15. It'll be another quick meeting, give you some updates for the day. Um, and then again, we'll get to our opening ceremony at, um, 9 30. Um, additionally, if coaches could potentially look ahead at the divisioning 
when I send it out to see who's in the first couple heats that will be going off on Saturday, if you have the manpower and the uh, opportunity to do it, please pre-stage your own uh, kayaks for the first three races. Um, it allows our staging team to kind of get together and be able to prep and coordinate for the day um, and also gets them a little bit ahead. And that allows everybody else to get a little bit ahead. So um, I'll look to remind folks early on Saturday about that if we can do it. And we'll try to pull those kayaks early as well. Um, as for the actual races, we're trying to start right at 945, 950 again, like we did last week. Um, again, this time we are running all the individual races, no combined races or anything. The unified races for doubles will occur before each event type. Um, except for the 1K, we run the 1K unified doubles with the traditionals. Um, I do not believe we have any unified 1K this year, but we definitely do have 500 meter, 100 meter, and 200 meter unified doubles. Um, so again, just remember, every time we go to change to a new race type this weekend, unified will go first. Uh, we're looking to have lunches available again at 1130. Uh, we will do the same pickup type that we did last time where all your lunches will be pre-packed into a box with your delegation's name on it. So you can come up, grab a box, grab a pack of water if you need it, and you can scoop back to your team. Um, with that said, we're hoping we can kind of get things wrapped up around three o'clock-ish. Um, we're, we're optimistic of how well we rolled on last Saturday that we will get there. Uh, but again, be flexible. You know, things change throughout an event. Um, you know, we may take a pause. So just be prepared for that. Um, hey, dish, yep. Uh, Zach, just to clarify, maybe I misheard you. Um, yep. I think you mentioned at 8.15 off the water instead of 9.15. So yeah, 9, just 9, to clarify, that is 9.15. Yes, it is 9.15. Thank you for that clarification. Um, and just a reminder for folks, when we transition from the 500 meter races to the 100 meter race, there'll be a little pause in there to get our timers from the 500 meter area to the 100 meter area. Um, so bear with us. It's a good time to use the restroom game plan for the rest of the day. It's about a 15, 20 minute swap out there. Um, and then we may do another break um, after the 200, just to get people pulled in off the water and prepped for the 1K slash give our water folks a chance to use the restroom, potentially grab a snack, a lunch, whatever it may be. Um, again, parking information, parking has not changed. Same game plan. Um, again, the, the main area that's gravel by the boathouse is kind of first come first serve, except if you have let me know that you need handicapped parking. Al Jank gave me two names for his delegation. Um, if anybody else needs specific handicapped parking, please email me ASAP. Um, we will cone off spots like we did for time trials for those folks. Al, do you have a question with parking? Not a question, just wanted to let you know that uh, Martha Mead had a real struggle trying to get her through the gravel with her little walker. Mm -hmm. And if if we are not in orange, the, the high risk, the severe situation where you're gonna have to move all the spectators to Wilmer Park, if we're, if we're in uh, moderate or low risk, we as a delegation plan on being on the other side of the pavilion again over there in Wilmer Park, but we were going to have Martha park over there because she can use sidewalk all the way yep. from the Wilmer Park parking lot to where we are. So the only thing, I still want to have a reserve spot for her in the event that we are in the severe category. Yep, in, Al, in we, we will prep a reserved spot in both locations for the Meads. Okay. Um, and then if you can just give, well, I, I, I'll know what your game plan is depending on what uh, risk level we're in and we'll pull the parking spot that you're not gonna go to. And I'll communicate that directly with you. Sounds good, cool. thank you. Um, again, uh, general parking you see in the orange is Wilmer Park in the circle closer to the water. And then the train station that we have across the street. Uh, Wilmer Park outside of Anne Arundel folks tends to be mostly volunteers. Um, and then a lot of volunteers and uh, spillover parking tends to end up in the general parking. Um, last time we also had parking opportunities in that blue area, um, the little blue line next to, um, where the green 
I don't know, rhombus, rectangle. I don't know my shapes anymore. It's been a while since I did uh, geometry. Um, but they did add that new um, environmental center that they work out of next door that has a gravel parking lot. You can park in there as well. Um, that's another good backup option for parking. But again, most, most likely the gravel parking at the boathouse and uh, CES, the environmental center next door, will be first come first serve. Spillover parking goes to Wilmer Park and or the train station. Venue map, the venue map for the most part hasn't changed. Uh, the one thing that we will outline is the addition of um, the split for delegations and families if we're in moderate risk. And I'll show that in a little bit later. Um, again, so registration and check-in is gonna hinge on what level we're in, correct? Mike, Mike already talked about that. So again, more than likely we will be in at least moderate risk based on the numbers that we are currently seeing unless we see a nice drop. Um, and that means we will have individual screening check-ins, the four questions with no temperature where you're, you will get a credential, coaches, athletes, unified partners, uh, volunteers that are registered delegation members will all get a credential. We will then still have the team delegation packets for head coaches to pick up, which will have your heat sheets, it'll have your bibs, it'll have your bib stickers and all that stuff. They will be separate and we will give out the credentials at screening, the COVID screening area. We will give out the delegation packets at our normal delegation area on the deck. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Was that confusing of an explanation? I'm hearing no. Okay. Um, again, that's the main thing. Uh, the other note is that your bib numbers will be different than the ones that you had for time trials. Um, I'd love to have duplicate copies of bib on hand, uh, but usually we run them in stacks of hundreds from the, the bib company that we get them from. I believe the bib numbers are going to range from 640 through seven something this time. Um, again, that information will come out no later than Thursday to give you an opportunity to relabel boats. Um, and if you can relabel your boats prior to getting on site, that's great. Um, I realize that, you know, in Al Jank's case, his boats are currently on site and he is not. Uh, so he will be relabeling in the morning. We will have tape for you. We will have markers. Um, but again, getting those, those bib numbers on the boats was huge for our uh, staging crew this past weekend. Jack, do you have something? Yeah, uh, I have two trailer loads of boats at the boathouse. What's who is the second one? Um, I have house, and then there's another one. I would have to double check who that is and get you an answer after that. Okay, Jack. See, what I would like to left their their tandem kayaks there. Who? The Baltimore City Mike Myers. Okay. Tandems. Because what I would like to do on Friday, uh, Zach, is to hook on to the uh, trailers that are there with my van and put them put the uh, boats down where they're going to be staged, so we won't have to worry about those two trailers. Yep. Yeah, we we can we can get that going. Uh, maybe we can just load them out for folks and they'll be ready to go. That could be yeah. good for, on Friday for sure. Um, again, a reminder on the coaches meeting on the the beach about. 9 10 9 15 we'll make an announcement to let head coaches know um one of the big notes is opening ceremony anticipating that we are going to be in moderate will end up being over where we typically host uh our award ceremony uh it it'll be accessible to everyone with the split venue that we have to do to keep families and spectators separate over in that area as compared to on the gravel where we typically do it um Again, we, we mentioned about the trailer parking, uh, same deal, uh, unload your kayaks, park them over on the grass where you typically do. Um, delegation spaces as usual, bring your pop-up tent, stake out your claim, but it's gonna be in a specified half location of what you saw this past weekend. Um, and that looks like, um, again, we're gonna have to split the area. That looks like this. So you saw the blue delegation area on the main map. We're gonna split it in that manner. We will have delegations and registered delegation members, coaches, athletes, unified partners on uh, the side closer to the water and, and the docks that you see. And then families and spectators on the other side. 
uh, from there. So um, if we go to this route, mentioning handicap parking with Al Jank there, um, I will actually put the handicap spot for Martha and Nick Mead closer to the opposite side where there's a sidewalk to get to the grass where that gray sidewalk continues around the building, which will give them easier access um, as a note for Al Jank there. But you can also see that how we are going to split it will give parents, family, spectators, an opportunity to see awards in the purple box there. They'll be able to see the awards deck. They'll be able to see opening ceremonies from there. Again, we're just splitting everyone out for the most part. Athletes will still be able to get up and be staged in the boathouse like we usually do and come off the stage back into the program area separated from the uh, families and spectators as well. Um, does everybody get what we're looking at and what we're attempting to do here for the moderate risk level on Saturday? Not hearing anyone speak up, not seeing any questions in chat. Um, so that looks good. Again, we, we will reiterate this um, when we do our coaches meeting on um, Saturday as well. And we will also put that visual in the email that goes out letting folks know what risk level we're in. Um, again, access to the dock for course preview, uh, eight o'clock to about nine ten. Um, we want to get people on the water to, to see the course, but at the same time, we need to get you guys off so we can roll on with the rest of the day. Um, again, for getting coaches onto the dock, we really only want coaches on the dock in competition if we have to do a hot swap. Um, and I will talk it out with those of you that I have an idea that need to do a hot swap. Um, yep. Okay, Jeff. Al, I see you got two that are coming up. Um, I will communicate with you guys um, early in the morning, like I did this past weekend to get that all taken care of. Um, thank you guys for getting all your lunch orders in last week too. Um, if there's any tweaks, Al sent me a tweak to his, uh, lunches for this weekend. If somebody has a tweak, please email me. Cause I want to call in the final numbers tomorrow. Um, but just a reminder from Mike's presentation in the beginning, if we go to severe risk, which is the 15, uh, plus number for every 100,000 people in the state, we will be canceling our box lunches and everybody will have to bring their own. Again, that is only if we go to the severe level for COVID-19 protocol this weekend. Uh, course inspection, same thing. Uh, again, this is all reminders. The, the key important pieces, just like last week, 8 a.m. to about 9, 10, 9, 15 a.m., then you got to get off the water. A coach has to be with any athletes inspecting the course, and that's it. That's all there is to it. You guys know the deal with course inspection up to this point. Um, medical, we will have medical located on the deck again. Um, again, Pam was roaming around, easy to see in an orange shirt, uh, but we will have medical ready to go for this weekend as usual. Um, and then family hospitality, um, depending on the severity level and uh, our risk level for uh, COVID protocol this weekend, uh, we may or may not have uh, family hospitality. Um, Debbie Credito, who runs that, usually gives out snacks and water and information about uh, this competition and potential upcoming competitions. Um, she, she may set up shop in the family and spectator area of the split area that we do. Um, we may scrap that all together. That's going to potentially be a game time decision. Debbie is also going to be helping with the individual screening, which is going to take up a good amount of her time in the morning. Um, so we're hopeful that we may be able to provide that service for families. Uh, but again, we're not going to promise that for this weekend with the COVID severity levels. Um, Jack, question. Yeah, uh, and this is something we can address with Mike later, but... Uh... What is good if we go into the uh, orange or the severe or the other next level down, what will be the restrictions on people being able to use the pavilion? There's plenty of space in there to get separation and stuff, and it's still considered outdoors. So, yeah. so uh, the short answer on that is the pavilion, um, if we're in yellow, will be fine. Uh, if we're in orange, we want to try to keep that unless we're in an emergency situation like weather type of thing. Um, uh, we want to keep that vacant other than volunteer check in uh, just to kind of keep that buffer between the family spectators who officially can't be 
there. And we're again, we're counting Wilmer Park as not there. Um, it, we're, we're concerned that if we count, if we have them in the pavilion, that so that there'll be spillover. So, but yeah, it's definitely there to, uh, and again, if we're in yellow, uh, which it looks like we'll probably be, um, then that's there for use by whomever wishes to socially distance, of course. For sure. Thanks. Thanks for that update on that, Mike. Um, the one other thing we are keeping an eye on, uh, well as COVID-19, is the weather. Um, things have continued to get better and better when it comes to the weather. There's a chance that late in the day on Saturday, and we're talking, we're talking late, like four o'clock and after on Saturday, um, that we might have some thunderstorms. Um, with that said, uh, we will be monitoring our weather app that's very good about giving us a heads up about 10, 15 minutes before anything really rolls into the area um, about severe weather. Um, if we have bad weather that rolls in during the competition, um, we will have people, if they have vehicles close, we will have them retreat to vehicles. Not everybody will have a close vehicle, um, but we can retreat into different parts of the boathouse as needed. Um, we can retreat into uh, parts of the old boathouse if needed. Um, Jack, I'm pretty sure we could use that side garage that has some space if we really needed to, correct? Uh, probably not. That's full of uh, stuff. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't know. We the... could we could re retreat into there if needed, yes. Yeah, yeah. We we could do the, the big garage. Um, we could look at that. That's, that's relatively open from last time we were there, unless Ben right. would get anything in there. Um, so we will, we will communicate that and I will communicate that again on Saturday morning. I will give you a, a weather update. Um, and I will tell you again, kind of who should kind of go where, uh, so it's not necessarily a free for all for just grabbing spots as well. We'll, we'll kind of designate retreat spots as well. Again, this kind of shows you the weather, uh, Al, what do you got? I'll let you go ahead and talk about the weather forecast that you have there. Yes. So uh, this this gives me a shot to be a, uh, a weather uh, forecaster for once. Um, and just like them, I'm going to do my best guess to throw a guess out there and hope I get the right thing. Um, I just won't say that it'll be perfect like they are sometimes. Again, you see thunderstorms. It's a really small amount of liquid that they're talking about. Um, but it's going to be late in the day. Really late in the day is what we're looking at. And it seems to keep pushing out of the way because originally it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and now it's pushed to the tail end of Saturday and mostly Sunday and a little bit Monday. Um, so we should be able to push the weather if we keep blowing hard enough and, and, and hoping and praying that we'll get the weather out of there, but we should be able to be okay for competition day. Okay, Zach, so my, yep. question, my question was just gonna simply be that it sounds like from what, what you guys are seeing, that there really won't be a weather call that needs to be made like Thursday night or Friday morning. No, no. no. I mean, initially earlier in the week with all the days we were looking at for thunderstorms, we thought that may be the case, but it's not looking like that anymore. Uh, so we should be okay, not have to make any sort of weather call. Again, as usual, like you were kind of saying, Al, if we do need to make some sort of weather call, we will try to make it um, Thursday night or Friday morning to give you all a heads up. Um, but we don't anticipate that'll be an issue this time. Um, again, this is the course map. The course hasn't changed in a week. That's the good news. Um, safety boaters will be in the same relative locations where the stars and the black dot is. Um, we had a, a huge amount of turnout for safety kayakers last week, and we're hoping we get the same amount. Um, we will have our pontoon boat stationed out there. We will have our safety boat out there as well. Um, and we will be set to take care of uh, athletes should we have any spills or dumps again this week. Um, rule reminders, I'm not going to read through all these. The rules haven't changed between last week and this week. Um, again, I will just reminder that give you a reminder that this week for championships, DQs count, whereas last week we were just giving you a heads up that somebody would have DQ'd. Um, again, DQs will end up with a participation ribbon. Um, to answer the question that Al had last time, if there's an athlete that goes into another lane and gets back in their lane, um, they will get the five second addition. Um, but as long as they do not impede on another athlete in the other lane, they will not be disqualified. 
So again, if, if they are currently the third place uh, paddler out of three paddlers and they're behind the other people and they scoot into another lane and scoot back without impeding, they'll get the, the five second penalty, but they will not be DQ'd. Um, so that is the, the one time uh, that you will not see a DQ for going into another lane, but they will get the penalty. Um, same thing goes for if they're way out in front. If they're way out in front and scoot into another lane and then scoot back out but don't impede, they'll get the five-second penalty as well. Um, other than that, that's the main thing that you need to remember. The rest of the rules are also the same. Um, all the starts will be the same. Racers ready, followed by the sound of the air horn and the visual from the flag. Um, and we will do that just like we did last week as well. Yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, I, I think, I know you, you stated it, but I think it's worth reiterating is as long as they finish the course in their assigned lane, they won't get DQ'd, but they must retreat back to their assigned lane at the finish line. So just want to make sure we're clear on that. Thanks. Yep. Thanks for the clarification again. Um, again, you guys have seen these rules. These slides will come out. You can reread the, the rule slides if you want to, um, you know, remember those things. Um, the, the right away for the lead when it comes to the 1K, singles and doubles, you guys know that. Um, and um, again, this, this is all the DQ stuff. There, there's nothing that's changed. Again, we, we went all over these all last week. You got a, a chance at time trials to really experience it. Um, nothing's changed. Same game plan as last week, plus uh, the DQs counting this time around. Um, again, we're doing three lanes for all of our courses, except for the 1K. Um, 1K will be the standard down and back loop uh, like we had set up last week. Um, there are four buoys at the end of the course where the 500 meter is. Athletes will go down the right side of the course outside of lane one to the first red buoy on the corner. They will make that left. They will pass the three other buoys, make another left and come down the outside of lane three back to the finish line for the 1K race. The 1K race course is still the same, um, but again, remind your athletes about the buoys they need to pass. Jack, do you have something to add? Okay, so you're making lane one the one closest to the starter. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, again, a reminder about uh, course inspection and being off the, the water by 915. Um, uniforms, uniforms haven't changed. I anticipate most of you will be wearing the same things that you wore last week. Again, remember your uh, PFDs, um, helmets are optional, water shoes and polarized sunglasses are great. Remember to, to pack that hat. Um, it will be bright and sunny on the water. Um, sunscreen, please, sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Um, I get yelled at enough by Debbie Credito the whole time. I will then remind all of you by yelling at you about sunscreen. Um, so please do that. Protect yourself. You want to have safe skin. You want to have safe skin practices for your athletes as well. Um, along with that, remember to hydrate. Um, when it comes to divisions and heat sheets and all that stuff, that stuff's going to be out no later than Thursday night. Um, if you're all really good and nice to me, I may get them out earlier than that, but we'll see. Um, I, I, when it comes to <laughs> divisions and heat sheets for uh, kayaking here, I'm kind of like Santa Claus, uh, except it's not as fun as presents, unfortunately. Um, again, you guys are going to get your, your delegation packets. They're going to have your registration reports for your athletes of who's eligible. It's going to have your sequencing reports, um, the MLB report. It's going to have your main heat sheet. It's going to have your bibs with labels and all that kind of stuff. Um, it'll have safety pins, all the usual good stuff. Um, so again, you should get the electronic version of the heat sheets and divisions no later than Thursday night. Um, Again, equipment regula re regulations, you guys know what you're looking at here, flotation devices. Um, you guys know the, the requirements for the kayaks. Um, all this stuff is nothing new. We've gone over this before. All boats were, were good when we were there um, and everybody's set to go if you're bringing the same boats and same equipment. Um, the on-water safety portion, uh, we will ass assist athletes that are potentially needed. Ooh, Al, do you have a question? No, uh, just comment. I'm outdoors right now, and it's pretty gray, and the wind's picking up. I'm going to head indoors, but I shouldn't lose my signal. That sounds good, Al, because we're getting a big thunderstorm here. I was going to warn you, but I was also excited to see if you were get, going to get stuck in it first. So <laughs> I'm glad that you're going to move inside. Um, again, reminders on the on-water safety portion. 
Uh, if your athlete dumps, we will give them a shot to get themselves back in to finish the race. Um, if they seem to be struggling, we will make a safety call and get your athletes taken care of. We will not leave them out to struggle. Again, um, we will have somebody to take care of you and uh, do what we need to do to help your athlete out in a safety situation. And unfortunately, again, you may want your athlete to get that whole three minutes to try to get back in the kayak. But if they're really struggling, we will save them. Uh, we're not going to let them struggle for three minutes. Um, coaching reminders. You guys should know the deal by now about no coaching uh, from the sidelines on the shore. Um, again, you know, go Jimmy. Great job, Susie. Um, all those kind of things are totally allowed. We want you to encourage your athletes, but we do not want you coaching them. Um, they've worked very hard for, for eight to 12 weeks to get here. You've trained them very well for eight to 12 weeks to get here. Cut them loose, let them do their thing and let them show their stuff. Awards. Uh, again, here is the visual for the side deck. Um, this is where we will have awards. The main set of stairs to the left that you see is where awards will happen. It is also where opening ceremonies will happen. Um, and then you see that small set of stairs to the right. That is where they will exit and come off the award stage if they don't want to go down the big steps. Um, and it'll make their life easier if they can't do those big steps. Um, as soon as athletes come off the water from their event, they will go right to award staging. Um, so we will have someone there to assist them to get set up in staging and get prepared to receive their awards. Um, again, I think awards should go pretty quickly. It typically does for kayaking. Um, for the most part, it's off the water. One or two uh, divisions are staged and, you know, we're giving out awards in about five to 10 minutes typically. Um, so we're turning around athletes really quick. Uh, we recommend that you have someone from your program there to either collect or remind athletes where to go back to for the delegation area. Um, if you have somebody that is being called for staging for their next event, and they happen to still be in staging for awards, which would be very odd if we would be that backed up, um, you can then you know let people know in awards as a head coach, hey, so-and-so is being called for their next race. Can I take them for their race? We will let the award people know that, yes, that's perfectly fine. We will pull their award and we will award them for both of their uh, award ceremonies after they are done with their next race if they need to leave staging from awards to competition staging. Um, again, a uh, reminder for the, the 1K awards, um, run order is from fastest to slowest but that doesn't mean that that is exactly what the uh, order of the awards is gonna be. Um, it, it can be sometimes visually deceptive of who's getting what place uh, because not all 10 competitors are in the same division. Uh, so again, uh, when it comes to the 1K, we, ru we run them straight in a line, one through 10 who's in the event, but that doesn't mean that's what the award is that they are getting. They're divisioned within that one through 10 sequence. Um, any questions on the award situation there? Um, whether it be for staging, for uh, the 1K event, or non-1K events. Not seeing any questions. With that said, that's it. That is all we have for you guys until Thursday rolls around. Um, again, it's, it's very much a usual championships outside some of the protocol stuff we're going to have to work with. We're, we're asking you guys to be flexible. We're also going to be flexible. Uh, but we're here to support you guys for what, whatever you need. Um, so again, communicate with us what your needs are. We'll communicate with you what our needs are. And we're going to have a, a fantastic weekend regardless of what level of protocol we are in. Jack. I have, uh, just want to let you know, I have four spare boats at the boathouse. I've got two 10-footers, uh, a 13-footer, and an 11-footer. Perfect. Perfect. That's good to know. Um, so again, folks, communicate with Jack if you have a boat need. Um, we did use one or two of those for safety kayakers. And if we do get a sur surplus of them, uh, we will use them as well. But again, uh, communicate with us. Uh, we did also keep an extra paddle on uh, the starting dock just in case somebody lost one at starting or something like that. So we will do that again as well. Um, 
But if you have any needs, if you have anything that comes up before this weekend, during this weekend, whatever it may be, again, communication is going to be a big key for us. And that that's going to get us through the weekend and provide an excellent opportunity for the athletes. Um, other questions that anybody may have, Steve or Mike, anything that you may want to add? I just wanted to add uh, briefly, we're talking about the likelihood of being in that yellow category. I just want folks to know we operated all of summer games that we held in what is effectively that category. And it went extremely well. Um, it's just doing things a little differently. Um, so don't, um, please don't take uh, any any warning or whatever that we may be in that is, you know, that things are going to be ruined. Uh, it's just some stuff we need to do a little differently. We even had separate seating for families and spectators from the delegations and it all worked. Um, and that was at every one of the venues. So, um, um, you know, thank you for everything you guys are doing. Thank you for a great weekend last weekend. And I'm confident regardless of the, um, the risk category, if you will, that we're in, uh, it's going to be a great event and it's going to be meaningful. Um, and again, we have the experience of running a, a, an even larger event and more complex event in that effectively that moderate risk category. And it went very, very well. Thanks to all the volunteers and the volunteer leaders. So. Yeah, I, I would add to that. Um, summer games went really well. There, there is a tendency, uh, not just for athletes, but also coaches and staff members and management team, et cetera, with that six foot distancing when we're, if we're in that moderate risk, just to continue to remind people, hey, six feet distance, six foot distance, everybody wants to give high fives and elbow bumps and hugs and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's tough to, it's tough to manage, but if you guys can um, assist with that, just reminding people, hey, just remember, uh, step back a little bit. And then um, similarly, what we did at Summer Games for the awards presentations, which most likely we're thinking will happen in that moderate area, is the awards presenters would extend the tray out. The athletes would grab their award and place it over their own head so there wasn't that immediate um, um, distance breakage, if you will, from the six foot regulation. So um, just a small thing there. So again, like Mike and Jim and Zach have all said, Thank you guys so much for creating this opportunity for the athletes and partners. Uh, without you as coaches, it doesn't happen, obviously, and, and appreciate your support in, in, in uh, Special Olympics Maryland and your programs. And uh, remind, reminders, you know, just uh, bring masks and be ready to be flexible and adapt accordingly. And again, we thank you for everything you do. Sounds like maybe some pizza paddles from uh, from pizza places that they pull the pizzas in and out of the ovens would be appropriate for the awards. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, well, well, then after we're done, somebody better be presenting me with a pizza. If we're going that <laughs> route, that's, that's what I'm, I'm asking from you guys as coaches then. Um, any, any last minute questions that have popped up, even with some of the extra stuff Mike and Steve have added um, in the last few minutes here? No, just thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. I know you guys have been working hard. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and the, the last thing to close out here is moving forward. If you have questions, um, here's the other sports directors and their upcoming sports. Um, after kayaking, um, unfortunately, I will, I will not be your, your sports director for my sports anymore. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to be around. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to see you guys. Um, that does mean that I'm going to try to trick you all into joining school programming in some way, shape or form. So <laughs> be ready for that. Um, but moving forward Talk again to for, for post uh, kayaking stuff, for cycling, for bowling, um, currently reach out to Steve Bennett. Um, I'm sure you'd all love to talk to him and he's going to love to, to hear from you guys as well. Um, <laughs> But I will be around uh, again if there's questions. I, I'll be supporting community sports and uh, Steve. And again, we will continue to work as a full sports team. Um, I loved working with all of you guys. I love making jokes with you guys. Um, I, there's not a minute that goes by for kayaking that I don't crack a joke about Al and his protests. And you know, Pam, I've got to learn a lot about your softball and got to learn a lot about uh, you know Austin Russell and. You know, a lot of experiences with Baltimore City's program with Bob Signer and, and, and Jack and all the things that he's taught me about kayaking. And I can go on and on and on and talk about you guys all day long. Um, but, you know, I, I've loved every minute of working with you guys. I will continue to be around. I will continue to be a resource. 
Um, and you guys are fantastic. I can't thank you enough for everything you guys have done, not just for our athletes and SOMD, but for me as well. Um, and I'm excited to see you all this Saturday at championships. And of course, if you need anything between now and then, just reach out and ask. All right, everybody. All right. Thank you. All right, folks. Have a great night. We'll see you later. You Zach, one thing that we can take offline yeah. uh, that I got. Um, so...